Hello, everybody. It's John Hope Bryant, founder, chairman, and chief executive officer of Operation Hope uh, and entrepreneur. Uh, but today I'm just uh, God's child. Um, and let me just first respond to uh, Dijon Jackson. Uh, Dijon Jackson's comment, he's a player for the um, Eagles, the NFL player for the Eagles. My first response is this. <sighs> um, look, uh, I've gotten countless calls about this and messages today and thought I should say something. I apologize on behalf of Dijon Jackson. I don't know him. But he apologized. But let me also apologize to my Jewish brothers and sisters. I don't think he understands the history. In fact, I'm pretty sure from his comments uh, first and the re-comments and the, the, the clarifying comments and the context I'm about to give you that he pretty much doesn't know what he doesn't know. Um, I asked, uh, asked a guy who threatened to blow up my church after the Rodney King riots in 1992, uh, who claimed to be a member of the Ku Klux Klan, you know, uh, my pastor, Reverend Murray, had forgiven him, even though he promised, uh, committed to blow up the church, white man. So, you know, why do you hate black people? You know, why are you in the Klan? Well, my daddy was in the Klan. Well, why was your daddy in the Klan? Well, his daddy was in the Ku Klux Klan. Okay. Well, why is your daddy, daddy in the Ku Klux Klan? Because his great dad, granddaddy was the founder of the local Ku Klux Klan. So, pastor and, my, and myself sort of said, so let me make sure I understand this properly. You don't actually consciously hate black people. <laughs> he says, well, I, I never even thought about it. I'm just doing what I does. He didn't know what he didn't know. He had no exposure. He had a high school education, he had no broad experience of the world. He hadn't traveled. He was just reacting through his life and his pain of his non-aspirational success and and spewing that on to others and went so far as to threaten to blow up uh, our church in Los Angeles, First AME Church. Reverend Cecil Chip Murray is the person who was lead on this enlightening conversation with this gentleman and brought him around. I'm not comparing D. John Jackson to that guy. Um, D. John Jackson seems to be uh, much more broad-minded. He has, uh, of course, achieved economic success. But let's, again, put this in the context. Um, the guy he works for, who owns a team, might be a couple, are Jewish. <laughs> I, I, clearly, he wasn't thinking, clearly, he wasn't thinking that uh, he's cashing a check written by somebody who's Jewish. Uh, he wasn't thinking that probably folks who manage his money, folks involved in all levels of his business life and maybe his personal life, are also Jewish. He just wasn't thinking. I, I think it's what he didn't know that he didn't know. Often is what we don't know that we don't know that's killing us, but we think we know. He needs to know because he's now in a position of responsibility. But let me say this, um, and I hope it does not come off the wrong way, but the, the Egos didn't hire, didn't go and look for a nuclear you know, scientist. They didn't go look for a math genius. They didn't go look for you know, the, 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 the best architect of a 20-story of a building. The, the, those are different skills for different types of professionals. They looked, wouldn't look for the guy who had the best athletic ability for that position, and they got it. But he may not be the, the greatest historian. Clearly, he needs to read better and go deeper before going off on a rant. So what's this about? It's about pain. It's the same thing as a, as a white, ignorant dude in the church. Um, but the difference is the white, ignorant dude actually meant harm, and I don't think Dijon Jackson did. Dijon probably needs to be... Uh, to pay a price for this because if he was white, he would have had to pay a price for this. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to give him a little bit of a pass only because of what's happened in the last month. And there's a lot of black people who've been dealing with 400 years of frustration and pain. They don't know what, don't know, they just have no idea what to do with it. What box do you put it in? I'll give you another a layer of this. I'm going to give Dijon a bit of a pass. You know, why are players taking a knee? Why did they take a knee? Why are players making these statements like this and bursting out of nowhere with this, with this frustration? Because in some ways, it's a little guilt. They made it from the hood. They made it from a challenged background. They succeeded. They're now making millions of dollars. People are, are, are treating them as, uh, you know, uh, mini royalty. 
but they've left the neighborhood behind. They've left the poor and the struggling behind. They may have left their own families behind. And in moments like this where you have, you know, murders and, and, and abuse and racism and injustice, uh, that and, and people and you don't see people understanding you and your race and you don't see an apology or even in any way of healing that is 400 years old. Uh, that's another video for another time. Sometimes you react and you don't respond. I think I said all this to say, I think Dijon Jackson, uh, Dijon Jackson, uh, Deshaun Jackson, I'm sorry. I think it's where you say his name. You can tell I, that I, I'm objective of this. I can't even say the name, the name properly. Uh, uh, so I'm not, I'm not for him or against him, D. John Jackson. I know you guys are hilarious. You guys are laughing at this. Um, I, I don't think he was for or against anything. I think that he is extremely frustrated right now. He's looking at the, the news. He's screaming at the TV. He's saying, what can I do? He's reading up quickly. Obviously, you should never quote Hitler, like ever. And by the way, Jews were slaves. Hello. <laughs> Jews and blacks were enslaved. If anybody relates to black pain, it's our Jewish brothers and sisters. Um, you know, I've got business partners who are Jewish. I've got some of my closest friends who back me up uh, with nobody knowing who are Jewish. The civil rights movement was backed in large part by the Jewish community. Uh, the Jewish community has been lockstep with uh, African-Americans for their entire civil rights story and social justice story in this country um, because they can relate to the pain. So this was and so to quote Hitler completely, I mean, there's no place where you want to quote Hitler. Uh, to quote uh, Mr. Farrakhan in this context, probably couldn't have quoted anybody um, in, more inappropriate if you're trying to not send the message that you're, this is an anti-Semitic anti comment. So uh, clearly that was a wrong move. Uh, to suggest there's some conspiracy uh, amongst anybody. Look, it, there's, a, there's a bum factor in the police department, Okay. It's a bum factor. There's a bum factor in pol in politics, Republicans and Democrats. There's a bum factor factor amongst twenty amongst uh, amongst uh, my white brothers, my Jewish brothers, my black brothers and sisters. What is the bum factor? People you don't want to be associated with. I have bums in my own family. Okay, so it's not a conspiracy. It's just unfortunately every now and then you run into bums, and sometimes those bums, in this case with with some of my folks in white America, have a lot of power. But there's also bums in black America and there's black on black crime. There's problems everywhere. And we've got to stop pointing the finger unless it's back at ourselves. Uh, so uh, Mr. Jackson needs to get educated. I need to obviously educate myself on his career so I can say his name properly. Uh, but he needs uh, to get educated on uh, uh, on what's going on here uh, and uh, clearly on the, the incredible role uh, that my Jewish brothers and sisters have had in um, the resurrection of justice uh, and the protection of those who are oppressed and coming to aid of, of those who are left behind uh, and, um, and having empathy and compassion. Uh, as, uh, by the way, many of my you know, mainstream white brothers and sisters have also done. Keep in mind the NAACP founded by whites and blacks. Did you know that? That's right. The National Association of Colored People founded by whites and blacks initially ran by whites. Uh, the Urban League, National Urban League, founded by whites and blacks and Jews. Uh, Operation Hope, founded by all people, um, founded by me, but with the help of whites and blacks and Jews and Latinos and Asians and others. Uh, most good organizations in this country, uh, those with a mission that has, uh, uh, has exalted, has involved uh, really all of God's children, uh, all, all those of goodwill. And, I, and in that regard, I just want to apologize uh, to all of my Jewish brothers and sisters for this unfortunate airing of uh, reactive emotions. This was uh, a uh, this was reactive, not a this was a reaction, not a response from Mr. Jackson. And for all for all of my my Jewish brothers and sisters, I apologize. Um, uh, even though I didn't do it, we all need to own it, right? And when we when we screw up, we need to own it. And when we and, and when we and, and when we raise up. We need to join forces and join hands. This is a time for us to move forward. We have a moment here. I don't want to screw it up. George Floyd's um, legacy cannot be mired by these distractions like this. All right, uh, George Floyd was 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 lynched on on effectively digital television, a phone. Well, we got it through television, even though it was through a phone, a video. Lynched, a modern day lynching. Right. And you can't unsee that. We don't want to unhear that. We don't want to. Un we don't want to forget that. 
uh, we want to we want to remember that and make sure that's our rallying cry for for these peaceful, positive protests and this change that we want to see in America and around the world. This has now gone global. It's now the biggest now protest in uh, U.S. history for sure, and possibly world history. Uh, and let's now remember again where this all came from, and to honor George Floyd's legacy by by not getting angry because anger is anger's not a strategy and frustration is not a business plan. But by but by creating a a, a thoughtful response uh, that includes a business plan for systemic change at social justice level, at the economic level, at the cultural level, at the us level, build bridges, not walls. That's where we're going, and I believe that ultimately that's where Mr. Jackson ended up by saying he wasn't trying to hurt anybody. And he probably needs to read a little bit more. I'll invite him over to my library and have some of my books. I'm sure he's a really smart guy. He just needs to grow the muscle up here as much as he's growing the muscle over here. All right, I'm out. John O'Brien. Let me know what you think and share the video.